Blender makes your life easy by letting you do a lot of tasks using only that. Blender. But once you start introducing other softwares into your pipeline, problems start popping up left and right. So let's talk about the biggest issues you're probably already running into today and how Pixar has created a solution to overcome them. To infinity and beyond! This video is sponsored by NVIDIA. If you've ever textured a model in Substance, imported your work into Unreal, or tried sharing a project with someone working in a different software, you probably realized how annoying this can be. Having to deal with different file types, proper export workflows for each individual software, and losing precious data in the process can make you feel like you're banging your head against the wall on purpose, repeatedly. And believe me when I say that this is something that all 3D artists everywhere experience. Whether you're working as a solo creator with your own custom pipeline, or in a big studio like Pixar, having to conform to rigorous pipeline constraints to maintain a proper workflow for all the other 1,232 people working there, the problem stays the same. But it makes sense too, right? Each software uses a proprietary file type that works for its needs. So a file from, for example, Blender has been coded to work in Blender, but not in Substance obviously. And in a company, each artist requires a file to be compatible with their own tool of choice to make it easy and sometimes even possible for them to continue work on a project. This is why having to export to a more universal file type like FBX or OBJ is a must when switching to a different software or handing off your project to the next person. But even these file types have a lot of limitations like the inability to properly store simulations, lighting, and many other aspects of your Blender projects. So what is the answer to this problem? Universal Scene Description or USD for short. First published as an open source software by Pixar in 2016 as their new core pipeline, which was mainly a way for their artists to make it easier to move data between each other and the tools they use. Since its release, USD is constantly undergoing changes and improvements, which is common for open source softwares, just like Blender, which is also consistently updated and expanded. But what is USD? USD is a lot of things, and if I dive really deep into it, it can actually be a very technical and complicated thing to describe. But if I put it simply, USD is a way of having apps like Blender, Unreal, Houdini, Substance, Maya, Nvidia's Omniverse, and loads more talk to and understand each other. Within the computer industry, there's actually a fancy word for this. Interoperability. Kinda hard to say. <laughs> And however fancy that sounds, it's actually not, as you can start using it today on your own computer or even with multiple of your friends or colleagues across the world. Traditionally, a pipeline is a very one-directional thing, where each person only gets to work on something once the previous person is finished. Or, for you personally, you can only go to the next step in the process, like texturing, if the modeling is completely done. You could compare this with baking a cake. As you build and create this cake, you have to finish each step before being able to do so. You can't bake the cake before you mix the dough, and you can't build it before baking the cakes in the oven. Each step is reliant on the previous one being completed, and more importantly, once you put on the frosting, add the filling, or decided that the sponge needed to be chocolate, there's no going back. You can't unbake the cake, change the flavor to vanilla, or take off the frosting. And this is what we call a destructive workflow. USD, however, is more like Legos. Each block represents a part of a 3D scene, characters, objects, environments, whatever, and you can assemble, disassemble, and modify these blocks independently. In a traditional pipeline, changing this block here for a different one would involve having to adjust the rest of the structure. But with USD, each building block can be worked on independently and I can simply change this block to a different color for example without the need to rebuild the entire model. It's a non-destructive approach that allows for experimentation and collaborative workflows without being bogged down by pipeline limitations. The goal in all of this with USD is to create a way for data to move between applications freely. To give artists and teams the freedom to focus on creation and not on exporting and being stuck waiting on each other to be able to continue working or to have to restart if the concept team decides to change things up later down the line or to have file formats coming in from other programs not working in your software of choice 
And on a surface level, that's what USD seems to be, a highly interoperable file format that's easily exchangeable between different softwares. And to be fair, this is what it will be to most of you, as a lot of Blender users tend to work as solo artists. And that's fine. But USD is more than just a file type. It's a way to assemble and organize any number of assets into virtual sets, scenes, shots, and worlds, using them from application to application and non-destructively editing them often in real time. So let's look at how we can work with USD in a Blender workflow. In its most basic form, USD has been an export option in Blender ever since 3.6. So if you have a file you're working on and want to save it as a USD file, you can go to File, Export, Universal Scene Description, and it'll give you a prompt window to save the file. It has quite a few options, but the main ones to note are Selection Only, which will only include selected objects in your export, and Animation and Hair, which will include, or exclude if disabled, animation and hair particle data for your objects. Now here's a great example of how USD works. This is a file from NVIDIA's USD sample library, which was made in a host of softwares like 3ds Max, and substance. And if you open this up in Blender by importing it, it works almost 100% immediately. As you can see, it contains all the data, including lights, depth of field, the camera, materials, and much more. The only thing that doesn't get exported properly is the HDRI lighting, which we have to set up ourselves. But it's quite incredible to think that this looks nearly identical inside of 3ds Max's Arnold renderer and just got exported over to Blender and works just as well using a single file type. It has proper hierarchy, materials, and basically everything is set up. It's really, really cool. Anyways, this goes to show how USD works between different applications and that it functions as an interoperable file format. But let's take a look at a more practical example. For this pipeline example, I'll be using a typical workflow of using Blender to model an object for a game. So the pipeline would go something like this. We create a model and UV unwrap it in Blender. Then since Painter can't work with .blend files, we export it as an FBX. Next, we import it into Substance so we can add some materials. We then export the textures from Substance as images, import the FBX file into your render engine of choice, set up the textures manually, and then finally you're able to create some renders using that model you just made. With USD, we can significantly simplify this process and retain a largely non-destructive workflow. The pipeline remains very similar, with Blender and Substance being the main component. But since USD doesn't natively work in real time between these apps, mainly because Blender still has limited USD support, I'll be using NVIDIA Omniverse to create that connection for us. Through Omniverse, I can get access to a more USD-compatible branch of Blender built by NVIDIA. I can enable the Omniverse connector for Substance to realize a live link, and I can use USD the composer to sort of bridge the gap between the apps and to view the final product in and maintain a connection. With that set up, we can now open up our Blender project in this branch version. If we then hit N and go to the right side here, we get the Nucleus add-on, allowing us to export this as a USD file. If we then go to use the composer and open up that USD file, we get a sort of live link between the apps and I can now make any change to the mesh, re-export it and have that automatically be picked up inside USD composer. Pretty cool, right? Well, it gets better. Once we're happy with the model, we can then open up Substance, enable the Omniverse connector in the Python tab, and go to Import Mesh to automatically import our object from Use the Composer into Substance. At this point, if we make changes in Blender, we can still re-export and pick that up in Use the Composer, which automatically links to Substance. However, once we add textures inside of Substance, doing this again will remove those textures. So once you're happy, add your materials in Substance, and with the Life Link enabled, these will automatically pop up and use the composer. Any changes you then make automatically export and update in use the composer. Really, really cool. To me, this workflow is pretty much mind blowing. Being able to make changes in Blender and Substance in real time and having all of that automatically work down the line and reflect in the final render is something else. If you're interested in trying out everything NVIDIA Omniverse has to offer, you can download it through the link in the description for free. And if you want to learn more about all of the technical use cases that USD and Omniverse together provide, you can find another free download link for that, as well as a link to attend the Open USD Day sessions virtually or in person at GTC in March. I really recommend checking that out because this is truly the future of 3D workflows.
But besides this fun example, USD has a lot more to offer and if you make good use of its capabilities, you'll become a lot more efficient as an artist in many ways. So what else can it do? Well, besides the fact that a universal file format would make your life a lot easier, it's absolutely the future as an emerging and constantly evolving tool. Ever since August 2023, USD has become an official non-profit organization called the Alliance of Open USD, or AOUSD for short, with Pixar, Apple, Adobe, Autodesk, and Nvidia as its founding members. I think this really goes to show how invested these companies are and how they really see this as the future of an interoperable file format which you know everybody should be able to use very easily now besides being a file format usd stores almost everything from lights and cameras to simulation caches and scene data in a layer like structure called crims which is short for primitives and it contains all that data to describe the world as a sort of composition to a wide range of applications now knowing that the name universal scene description actually makes a lot of sense to me in regards to the layer type structure of USD, if you're familiar with Blender collections, it works similarly where you can have anything inside of a collection, inside of a collection, inside of a collection, inside no. of a collection. With the added benefit that USD treats all these layers as instances, and therefore is able to very quickly load and read all the data in an optimized way. This works similarly to actually instancing collections in Blender, which is good because instances require less computing than actual objects itself. It's also very similar to, for example, pre-comping in After Effects or compounding layers in DaVinci. You basically put stuff inside of other layers and that makes it easier and faster for the computer to work with the file. A great example of this optimization is the newest USD sample project released by NVIDIA called DaVinci's Workshop. Using their USD Composer app, which is perfect for viewing USD projects with real-time lighting, I can play back this 67 gigabyte folder of assets textures and lights with millions of polygons in close to 120 fps without any lag or issues just because of how usd loads in the files and textures in an extremely optimized way similarly for animations which used to be exported as alembic files before usd these are now a lot faster Alembic files are usually huge in size, very unoptimized, and are read by your computer slowly, usually resulting in a choppy playback. With USD, achieving a steady FPS is no problem at all, and the file size is significantly smaller. Another really cool feature is that you can access the layers inside of your USD project from the outside of the file quite easily. So for example, there's a prim layer containing the data that this sphere is green inside of this USD file. By simply changing that to red in a USD compatible editor, like USD Composer, we can change the color of the object without ever having to open the actual file in Blender. Now that is incredibly powerful, although this is obviously a very basic example. Another major benefit is that USD still allows you to only work on a single layer of a file in a certain software. So even if your file contains a complete project, like the attic I just showed you, including cameras, lights, and much more, you're still able to open up only a single single layer inside, for example, Substance and work only on that single part of the project. This also goes for if multiple people are working on the same file, which is another major strength of USD. 10 people could work on the same file, so changes made by artist number one are immediately visible to artist number two and can help build their art or make them change things for the better without having to send back and forth exported files. Even just being able to work with multiple people who don't have to be in the same room or even even in the same country is kind of insane and incredibly powerful. It's safe to say that USD is far more than just a file format. It's a comprehensive technology, platform and ecosystem that in its mission actually really aligns with Blender, the freedom to create. USD is still very much under development. However, the dream is real. A universal software file format for any software within our industry without limitations editable in real time by multiple artists. We should all be thankful for Pixar paving the way with this incredible development and for companies like Nvidia and Apple to pick up the torch and contribute their part in no small way.